Hello, everyone. If we could, let's uh, have a moment of silence and reflection for just a moment before we start. Thank you very much. And uh, there's a lot to think about and worry about and be thankful for in the world today. All you got to do is watch TV a little bit and read a little bit and know why we're so lucky to be at Holden Beach where we don't have so much of that stuff. We'll officially call the meeting to order and welcome tonight. We see some new faces here tonight and uh, it certainly is refreshing and we see a lot of more experienced faces here tonight. And uh, we'll go to item number three on the agenda, but before we do that, reminding everyone that in the back of the room there's a table that has all the documents that you might find interesting in regards to the meeting tonight, an agenda, and so forth. So let's stand and pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States to my right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Number four, consideration of the agenda. Um, Mr. Mayor, I make a proposal to uh, move agenda item number 14 in front before item number eight. You want just to reverse those? No, I want, I want what, was what is currently 14, guest speaker Mike Sullivan, Holden Beach Property Owners Association, to be after the police report and before the discussion and possible approval of Resolution 1701. To make this, to try, I'm trying not to have to renumber everything. <laughs> can, can you just reverse those? Would it be, can't reverse. All right, tell me no. what you want. You want the 14 just before 8. 14 before 8. And we still do the 8 after, right after. Okay. Okay. We can I, I got it. Okay. Thank you. Here we have a, we have a vote. <coughs> Still going to be number 14, but it's four number eight. All right. Anything else? Is there a motion to approve the agenda as amended? I move to be approved the amended agenda. Is there a second? Second. Sec motion, second. Discussion here and now. All in favor say aye. 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 The motion is approved. The agenda stands as amended. Number five, the consideration of the approval for minutes <coughs> for the regular meeting of January the 17th. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 Sounds approved. And 5B, the meeting of January 23rd, those minutes. If I may interject. Uh, yes, sir. Just, uh, and I don't have anything to add to the meeting to the minutes, I'd just like to point out that uh, we neglected to identify a meeting time for the uh, board workshop on the 15th of March. And if you could, um, uh, I guess, give your calendar some attention between now and the time that we get to the manager's report to decide what time you'd like to do that on the 15th, that would be appreciated. All right, still a motion on the floor. So moved. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Second, okay. Any discussion? <clears throat> Hearing that, all in favor say aye. 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 Stands approved. So the minutes of 5A and B are both approved. And now we're going to have some public comments. And I have a list here tonight. <coughs> uh, Mr. Flesh Hour. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I am speaking in regards to item nine on the original um, agenda for tonight. On behalf of my wife, Karen, who unfortunately is out of town, but asked me to speak on her behalf. Nine years ago, at the February 26th Board of Commissioners meeting, two separate enterprises appealed to the board to allow for the sale of goods or services directly on the beach stream. Um, Karen expressed our opinion on the matter both at the meeting and in a subsequent letter to the board, copies of which I just passed down to the, to the current board. For the, for the sake of time, I will only read an, ex, an excerpt from her letter. The beauty of Holden Beach is the fact that you don't need to take money to the beach. I don't want to discuss or argue about buying something with my nieces, nephews, or grandchildren every time they see the cart heading our way. People choose Holden Beach because it is a place that has remained the same throughout the years. Vacationers as well as local residents continue to bring their children and grandchildren here so they can enjoy the same simple pleasure of going to the beach that they enjoyed as a child. I beg you to please don't commercialize our wonderful island. Please don't open Pandora's box. Um, we mean no um, disrespect to tonight's presenters. We simply believe the town has provided some sufficient commercial zoning including several oceanfront parcels, and that commercial activity should be contained within these designated zones. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Ms. Compton? Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Young? Sheila Young, 193 Brunswick Avenue West. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. You always can hear me. <clears throat> I'm here to comment on agenda item number nine. Um, I'm here to voice my personal opinion on any commercial ventures on the beach. Looking back at prior requests, several years ago, two vendors came to the same town meeting held over at the chapel. I believe someone else has already referred to that. One was a parasailing company. The second, I believe, was a food vendor. Neither one was approved. Soon after, a fatal parasol accident happened with the same company that had come to request here. They had the accident on an area beach. It was a good, a good decision that Holden Beach did not approve their request when they asked for access to our beach. Several years later, the current vendor presented again, not approved. This vendor the one who's going to speak tonight, seems to have a well-established business in our commercial area that we, many of us, think is fine, and we commend them for that. Many of us, permanent residents, second homeowners, and visitors, have chosen Holden Beach because it's less commercial than other places. Some parents and grandparents may not appreciate any vendors on the beach, and that's been mentioned by previous speakers. If one vendor is allowed, will others follow? Can we allow some and not others? 
Will Holden Beach be accused of discrimination if that <coughs> happens to come up? It's up to you to make the best choices for us. You're our elected officials. I'm sure you will make the best choice, and I thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Woods. stands for very expensive. I imagine it's got velocity or some other word to it, but BE is very expensive. And if it goes from BE to AE, I'm expecting to save two or three thousand dollars or more on one house. And I build it at 21 feet to be above most category five storm surges. So I urge y'all to do whatever you can. I'll be prepared tomorrow to look at uh, our congressman's website and see where he might be holding town meetings or somewhere this week. I just arrived from Virginia, but I will track him down and be more than happy to pass along whatever y'all do uh, in addition to your official um, communication. Uh, the other issue I'm fully supportive of is item number 13, uh, possible approval Lockwood Folly Dredging Piggyback Project. Um, if my back of the envelope numbers are correct, um, at a dollar and a quarter, give or take, a cubic yard, uh, which would be what the town would be paying, that's a sweet deal, and anytime you can get sand at that price, we ought to do it. Uh, both of my properties are paying significantly higher property tax because of the Central Reach Project. I fully support the Central Reach Project, and I don't have a, a problem with paying for that. Uh, my belief is we've got one beach, one island, one community here, and I appreciate y'all's help on the East End on this project. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Woods. Chief Wiley Lane. Good evening, everyone. Huh, a month ago, I was feeling pretty good about break-in season. That, however, was a month ago. Since that time, <clears throat> we've had six. Uh, those have been between the 200 block of OBW and the 900 block of OBW. Uh, they've all been on the ocean front. They've all been rental houses. They've all had flat screen TVs in them. All those flat screen TVs have disappeared. And to date, we don't have a suspect. Uh, it's not just happening here, it's happening in the county, it's happening at the other Area beaches, the South End Task Force is working diligently trying to come up with a suspect. However, so far we're six in and nobody arrested. Um, that being said, I'd like to say a couple other things. <laughs> Number one is, 
It is still break-in season, right? It is still break-in season. Um, we depend on you guys to help us as much as you can. You see something that doesn't look right, if you hear something in the middle of the night that doesn't sound right, please give us a call so we can investigate it and hopefully catch whoever's doing this. Uh, it's been an average of one a week. Um, we haven't had any so far this week that have been reported. Um, the other thing I would say is this. I call this break-in season for a reason. The reason I call this break-in season is that this time of year, there are not as many of us here as there are during the summertime. And majority of houses on the ocean front are unfortunately rental properties and not properties that are occupied by full-time residents. That being said, if I owned an oceanfront property on any beach, me personally, if I wasn't going to be there full time, and there wasn't going to be there, be somebody there full time, I would have an alarm system. ATMC, $17 a month. Not recommending them, just throwing it out as an observation. A minimum of $17 a month. If I got to replace five flat screen TVs once a year, I'm probably looking at $2,500 to $3,000 to replace those TVs for that same amount of money at 17 bucks a month. I can have an alarm system and catch whoever's trying to break in to steal my TV. I would whole lot rather do that, me personally. I, I, and I just throw that out there because this time of year, there's not enough of us here, and there's not enough of us police to be everywhere all the time. <clears throat> the break-ins are occurring on the ocean front, and they're occurring from the ocean front side. Hard for us to be on both sides, 24 hours a day. Uh, need all the help we can get. Um, the other thing I would say about break-ins is this. Once they start, they don't stop until they get caught. Because every time they do one, and they get away with it, that encourages them to do another one. And the more they do, the better the chance is they're going to get caught. So I'm confident that by the end of break-in season, whoever's doing this will be in jail. But in the meantime, they're doing a lot of property damage to oceanfront houses, and they're taking a lot of property out of oceanfront houses. So. If you see anything, hear anything, feel anything, give us a call. Let us check it out. Otherwise, fairly calm on the beach. Glad to answer any questions. Any questions? Thank you, Thank you Chief, Thank for you. all the hard work, you and your staff. Number 14, Mr. Sullivan.
29 months ago. In October, at the Fourth Commission's meeting of 2014, there was a presentation made to describe to the community what the flood maps would do, how they would affect the community, and how we would benefit from those flood maps being implemented. To give you some of the statistics that were given at that time, 92%. 92% of the property owners would benefit from the new flood maps. At the time, there were 1,328 in BE, that very expensive zone that you spoke about. The new flood maps moved 1,225 of those 1,328 people from BE into AE. If you do the math, that comes to us paying between four and five million dollars more a year as residents of this community than we have to. That's 29 months ago that they put these maps in place. So when I, <clears throat> excuse me. Now that, that's only for the people going from AE, a, B to AE. That has nothing to do with the people who are in AE, but their flood BFB has been lowered so that they're now above the, the BFB by a couple of feet because every foot you go above BFB, you save money on your cleanup. So we're talking about a minimum of four to five million dollars a year. I can't tell you how I don't know how many people are in the variance between their feet. But the BE, <coughs> speaking to flood insurance, your premium is $2,000 to $8,000 a year. That's kind of the range. You go to AE, it's $500 to $800 a year. That's a big, you know, I, to me, we should be yelling and screaming about this. And so what happened is last month when I came to the board commission, I intended to speak and ask a question about this. But when the town manager gave his presentation, he explained that the anticipated time, which was January to February of this year, for implementation of the map had been postponed indefinitely and that we had no <coughs> idea when they would be implemented. There was very little conversation from the board asking why or what we could do about it. <coughs> When, it, when that was done, instead of me getting up and speaking on it myself, I went back to the directors of the Oakland Beach Property Owners Association and asked if we could make a presentation on behalf of everybody who owns property on the island. And we had some discussion and we had some communication. And as a result of that, we came up with some simple suggestions for the board and requests for the board that they take a proactive role by getting our congressmen involved, getting our two senators involved, and by writing a letter <coughs> to FEMA regionally and the administrator of Washington, D.C. And that we, as a community, as a group, would put a letter on our page that people could then tap into and send to the respective FEMA and uh, elected officials. I'm happy, and then we shared that with the board. And I'm happy to say that the board the resolution that, that's going to be discussed right after I'm done here has incorporated and adopted all those suggestions into the resolution. So for that, I appreciate that. And I think that it's time that we do it. And, and one, one thing I'd say, the resolution follows up on my idea the more people involved, the better we are. But I would say that the time has come that if this isn't acted on quickly by Brunswick County, or by the other coastal communities, and it's time for us to act on it. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Mr. Freer. Um, yeah, so item number eight, discussion of possible approval of resolution 1701. As uh, Mr. Sullivan has uh, expressed, I. I have, and I'm sure a number of the board has been uh, speaking to uh, HBPOA, uh, individuals that are affected, our friendly realtors, um, and I know a lot of activity behind the scenes from, um, from the town manager and town planner has been happening, but um, I, I agree with uh, with the previous speaker that uh, it's time to get proactive and, and um, start uh, 
raising our voice to uh, anybody that will listen. And um, so that's the that's the the background behind this this resolution that I propose. Town clerk, going to read the resolution or? I could. It's also in the back of the room. So okay. I know it's long. I don't. Whatever the board, whatever you would like to do, if you want to do. I know there's a. Yeah, I know there's a, a question that came up about the date in it. Um, In the first paragraph about the um, communities in the state in June 2016, that was the flood map. And as uh, Mr. Sullivan pointed out, it was um, 14. 14. First published in August of 14. Is is that the case, uh, yeah, the, David? <clears throat> the, both of those dates are correct. Um, you have to realize that Brunswick County was actually the very first, uh, as a poster child for the process and had its maps, uh, it's my understanding, had its maps, preliminary maps done first and then <coughs> the rest of the states followed through. So both of those dates are, tr are correct um, as it relates to the, and other affected communities in the state. You know, it took some time for the other maps to get done and the state to come up with their process because we were we've been on hang like you said for about a year trying uh, before the state finally figured out what the actual review process was going to be right. so could we then add that um, August 14 date in there as far as relating to Brunswick County and leave the the um, communities in the state in 2016. So just insert before that the um, first published in Brunswick County in August 2014. That's, that's a very easy edit. Yep. Okay. Well, I had a question about that. It, since we were the poster child, apparently. Is it not true that all of the maps were published eventually at the same time, June 16? It's, it's my understanding that all the all maps in the state have been done now. Now, I, I haven't verified that. Well, I, I guess what I was that. wondering is, is could FEMA have acted earlier because we had an earlier submittal? I thought they all were assembled and then published. I don't know. I don't know either. Okay. I just don't want to have something in a resolution that isn't factually correct it's because we're going to be urging FEMA. We're going to be putting pressure on as many politicians as possible, and I don't want to have something in there that, that could be pulled out and challenged, and therefore we lose our story, the message. Yeah, August August the fourteenth. August the fourteenth is is correct for the town maps. I mean, I pulled it off. The, the wordings the, the wording doesn't refer to the town. It refers to FEMA and North Carolina Emergency Management issued the preliminary flood maps. I just if we're gonna if we're gonna add other details, we're gonna need to change some of the wording here because otherwise, I'm concerned the town's gonna look like we don't know what we're doing when we go to the yeah so to so, the higher officials to take action. So since um, you know since we should focus on Holden Beach. Um, if you look at the second sentence, or I'll, I'll just, whereas the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, and North Carolina Emergency Management 
issued a new preliminary flood map for the town, and here's where you change it, on in August, in August 2014. 2014. Very good. With the anticipation that the flood final floodplain, you know, so that's where the simple edit, keep it simple, keep it focused on Holden Beach. Does that make sense? <coughs> and is the process such that when these maps are approved, they have to be approved for the entire county at one time or are they approved just for Holden Beach? It's done by panel, by panel, by county. And so the, the panels, for example, the panel that has the town hall in it runs all the way to Barntown. It, it's kind of the analogy. So it's done on a by county basis is my understanding. So, so that means that we are being held up by the county. I, I can't say that. I, I, I don't know that. We're being held up because there have been some appeals right. and FEMA is working through whatever the it is that they're working through on those appeals. Because there are areas in Burnwood County that will not benefit from this change. But the opposite So, so to briefly, you know, if you look at section one, we're, we're asking the board through this resolution to communicate to FEMA and the North Carolina Emergency Management. Section two is our, is our ask to the, the Board of Commissioners at, of Brunswick County to better understand that and communicate our, our need for urgency. So, um, and we could do that in a number of different ways. Um, we could send some commissioners up to the next meeting. We could, I don't know, probably the mayor probably knows everybody on that board of commissioner. He could communicate this uh, resolution or, or communi communicate the uh, need for um, the, the uh, accelerated schedule. Uh, we could do a number of different things within that section too to get in front of the uh, Brunswick County Commissioners. Well, I like that it's directed from Holden Beach and it explains our plight. I think that's very important. So I, I think the wording of it is adequate. And I think sp speaking up and pushing our case is better than sitting still and being quiet and waiting until the government decides to do something. I don't see any downside no. to, the, to the board giving our position that we would ask them to pay attention and as quickly as possible get this approved for us. Mr. Hewitt, do you see anything in section one that the staff will be directed to do that is beyond the staff's ability? No, <clears throat> no, sir. Okay. And the one thing I would like to elaborate on, though, is providing a monthly status report on the FEMA flood map process at the commissioner meeting. Um, please don't look at that as, um, as the staff uh, is either res responsible for making FEMA get these maps done or not. We've communicated um, a whole bunch on a number of different levels. And, you know, like, like my grandfather used to say, um, it doesn't do the horse one bit of good when the jockey's coming down the home stretch whipping him with a riding crop. It just makes the jockey feel good. We'll be glad. We'll be glad to sortie hard on this, um, and I just we're we're dealing with FEMA, the federal government, and some, that's like pushing a wet noodle sometimes. Yeah, that that's understood. I, I know um, Mr. Evans presented 
<coughs> what last uh, February, he he was basically communicating what he he was told from FEMA that January of 17 was supposed to be the the map, and and that's understood. He he he's passing along information that. He, he, he received and he was told that that was the latest information and, and it turned out uh, it wasn't correct. But it wasn't his, you know, wasn't his information. He was passing that, that along from FEMA. That's, that's understood. I mean, that, that, that you're passing, you know, that the town is getting information from North Carolina Emergency um, Committee or, or FEMA and that's... We're, we're, going, we're getting it from whoever we can get it to. As an example of what we're dealing with, this is from FEMA's website today. The last time it was updated was 9-15-2016, and it's got the preliminary map date on it in January the 20th. And the map, I mean, it doesn't have any of the appeal um, information in there at all. So, I mean, that's, that's what we're dealing with. Yeah, okay. Uh, just, just as a, a clarification on the wording for the resolution to make sure that I've got this right, um, we, we want to reword that first sentence by, strike, by inserting August of 2014 after the word town and then strike and other affected communities in the state in June 2016. Correct. And then carry on okay, with Correct. Okay. Well, if I heard the edit correctly, we're still stating that FEMA and NCEM issued those new preliminary flood maps for the town on that date. Is that going to be? And, and that is, is that going to be accurate? And that's okay. accurate. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we need a motion to. I would think so. So move that we approve the resolution 1701 as amended. A second. Any more discussion? Are you ready to vote? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. It's unanimous, Madam Clerk. <clears throat> okay, we've done number eight. Number nine, the Sellers family. <coughs> Did you bring us some samples? <laughs> that's, that's not a good start. Well, before I begin, I just want to say thank you to the Board of Commissioners for actually letting us use their facilities and allowing us to have this opportunity to speak. And then secondly, I'd just like to clarify, those that spoke before, I appreciate your comment and your respect that you've shown to our business and our family. I completely understand the concerns, and that's what we're here for, is um, to kind of enlighten you a little bit about how we do conduct our business. And um, I know that we do not like to compare our beaches. And um, I understand that too, being I was raised on Oceanal Beach in a family business for 39 years, then worked at Sunset Beach for 14 years, and I've been at Holden Beach. This will be my eighth season at Holden Beach. So I do understand um, the concerns people have for change of our Brunswick County beaches. And, um, I um, completely understand that because I continue uh, spending most of my life in Brunswick County. Um, I never thought there would be anything but our little old bridges. And now we have high-rise bridges. So change is, is hard to accept, but on the same point, I just want to kind of um, flip it just a little bit to the fact that we all love our beaches, and we all love our little family pine beaches, and that's our desire with our business. And those of you that I see a lot of faces that I do see in my shop, and some of the people that spoke, I mean, I appreciate their business. I'm, some of them I see a lot in my shop. But we are underneath the bridge at 111 Jordan <coughs> Boulevard. We came uh, to Holden Beach in 2010. Of course, Sunset Slush started at Ocean Isle Beach and has been there for 15 years. It's on Oak Island, and it's been there for 13 years. We try to build a very family-oriented business, and if you frequent our building, then you know that that's what we stand for. Uh, we stand for um, customer service. We stand for pride in our beaches and what we do. We try to support the communities, and we try to get out there and 
become a part. Um, I guess what I'm trying to, um, I don't want you to think that we're here to change, but in, I have to speak for my customers. And every year they ask us, all day long, June, July, and August, why aren't you on the extreme? Because they are familiar with it being on the other island. So I tell them I will continue to try, and that's what we're here for, is to um, let you know that as much respect as we have for the beaches, we do have to realize that our clientele has changed on our islands, and they will continue to change because we have people from everywhere. <clears throat> and June, July, and August, we have to cater to those people. And so that's what we're here to do. Um, yes, in, in seven years, our business has grown, and we're very thankful for it. We've been very welcomed, and we have a lot of loyal customers. Some of those people come in here on Saturday, and they wait at my shop to check in to their cottage. <laughs> I see them every single night while they're here. So, per se, it's not so much of me trying to drive for the business, it's to satisfy my customers. So, um, I'm going to stop for a minute and introduce you. This is my son, Drew, and this is my son, Devin. Uh, we are a family business, and Devin is the one that got us in Sunset Slush all those years ago because he pushed the cart on National Beach while he was in high school. And uh, Devin, I mean, Drew has worked at Holden Beach since he was in high school. He worked for Mr. Hobbs at the water slide and a go-kart track for years. So we're very, um, we've been at Holden Beach a long time. Devin manages our beach services on Ocean Isle Beach. He and Drew both do. So I'm gonna kinda let him step in and tell you how we'll run just so you can kinda um, maybe help you understand our business a little better. Hello everyone. Oh, um, first, thank you for letting us speak here. Like my mom said, uh, this is a business that's personal to us. We love this business. Um, we love the beaches that we are born and raised at. A lot of people want to, as we grew up, they say they didn't want to get away from Brunswick County. We're stuck here and we're staying here until we pass away or leave my grandkids. <laughs> um, so what I'm here to do today is just kind of enlighten you on what a daily business operation of a beach park is. That way you can just understand the picture of it. Um, there are a lot of different styles of way people do it. And if you know us, we're going to do it as professional as we can. So first, let me just start off with, you can see I'm dressed a little bit differently than they are. This is what our beach cart pushers are required to wear. We don't allow them to go out there without shirts on. We don't allow them to have bathing suits on. We don't allow them to enter the water while they're out there. Um, they have to wear some type of shorts with pockets, has to look professional, and it always has to have one of our shirts on with the sleeves on. Um, we just believe that if we're going to do something, we're going to honor the beach that we're at and respect it as much as possible. So what we have is we have beach carts. They are two foot wide by two foot deep. Um, we carry four to six flavors on each cart, and we switch them between carts, and each day they take out different flavors as well. That way our customers can get as much um, of a variety as they can. If someone always gets something they like. Um, with that, we also do not allow our beach carts to sit still unless they are serving someone. Even in those carts, <coughs> I know this because I push these carts myself. We are not, when, we, when someone comes up to buy something, we try our best to push to a spot where there's not people so we don't block their view. Um, we understand people come to the beach uh, to relax and to enjoy it. Uh, our carts may pass you once on a beach day. We're only out there for a possible three to four hours. You can only push for so much, especially with the tide. Um, if you're lucky, some do get it twice, and um, that's just because maybe two carts are crisscrossed. The only time our guys are allowed to stop is if they take a drink of water. Again, we try to tell them to go to a dead spot where there's not houses or where there's not someone sitting down. Um, trying to think, is there anything else I should the only thing else I'm actually going to pass off to my brother is because we do care for the beach. Um, this isn't just something, I, like I said, we grew up going to the beach. My wife's on the beach every single day. 
Uh, we like to keep the beach clean as much as possible as, uh, ourselves, and he's going to go in to explain how we would do that. So here's our brother group. Once again, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Uh, a lot of people's concern at first is trash, and we know at all beaches in here there's a trash problem because people leave it out there and some of them aren't considerate. So we believe that we help the problem instead of enhance the problem. The first thing that we do, we have these souvenir koozie cups that we put our ice in. Uh, first, it gives a deal to the customers. They save a little bit of money. But most importantly, on the strand, it gets rid of the opportunity to have disposable cups. So people can take these home, wash them, bring them back out there. That way we don't have to put them in our paper cups. Yeah, we also have regular cups too, but we promote these with everyone who comes. Uh, he was talking about our employees who go up and down. This is why I say we really try to help is each car has a trash bucket where we will let people put trash in, but also each employee has to observe around them. Any kind of trash does not matter if it's sunset slush or not, they pick it up. If the carts come by for the second time and we see sunset slush trash that people haven't even left the beach yet, we'll go ahead and ask them if we can take it. So we try to eliminate the trash as much as possible. We've been uh, running the Ocean Isle Beach location for two years, and when we came in, we implemented on Saturdays, we have employees walk the entire beach and pick up trash. Our guys will come back with two full trash bags each. And we do it every Saturday because it's the day that everyone leaves and everyone comes in, so we try to clean it up for everyone. <coughs> um, and then also at Ocean Isle Beach, we sponsor a trash bath at the end of the summer. So we serve to everyone who comes for free. We go out and pick up trash, and I don't know if there's something like that here, but if there wasn't, we'd be willing to sponsor it and run it if we could. And before we finish, and if there's any questions, I would like to go back to what Mom was saying a little bit a while ago is, you know, without a lot of the people who support us and want us out there are tourists or people who own second homes here, and they can't be here because they live other places. So just remember them, without them, the beach wouldn't be what it is. It wouldn't run. Businesses would go out of business. Holden Beach wouldn't be what Holden Beach is. And from the Outer Banks to Myrtle Beach, there are only four beaches that don't allow paddling, Figure Eight Island, Riceville Beach, Holden Beach, and Sunset Beach. And one of those, Holden Beach, does not fit in with the rest for very good reason. Thank you. Anything else? Um, I also just wanted to say right quickly, because I know we don't want to take up a lot of your time, but um, we did, a, I, I, it weighs heavy on my heart. I'm on both ends of this. Of course, I have to satisfy my customers. And I know what we stand for as a business. So a few years ago, I decided to, to satisfy myself. I put a little box out in front of our shop, a little mailbox. And I put a little card and a little slot next to it that asks just basic questions. What's your favorite flavor? Um, how many times do you come when you're here? If uh, Would you like for us to be able to serve off the beach street? I just did a little survey to satisfy myself. Little postcards. Well, that box definitely was filling up every day. And out of prob I quit because I've got a lot to do. But out of about 260 something surveys, six said no. Of course, that's our tourist clientele that was here June, July, and August. Those were the ones that were responding to my survey. So just to kind of put it in your head, June, July, and August, when we are, our job as merchants on this island and our job as commissioners of what to bring to this island for our tourist industry, I'm speaking for them to let you know they want it. They're not against it. But I completely respect the fact that those that live here on the island, your concerns. And I hope after listening to my son tonight that we are not here to just um, come for a season and leave. We've been here, this will be our eighth season. We do care about our island. Um, we would strive tremendously to make it better. And um, trash, <coughs> we go above and beyond on that. I know that's the number one concern for people, but that's a concern. We have a lot of disrespectful people that visit our islands. And so I hope that you understand 
through our presentation tonight is that we're not here to change and take the status of the family beach away from Holden Beach. We're hoping to have an opportunity to enhance it, to add a little character to our beaches and to give our customers that are here June, July, and August uh, the opportunity to enjoy a little more. So with that being said, we're done. <laughs> There's any questions Yeah, I have a question. Does the business model of your establishment <clears throat> require that you sell your product on the beach? No. no. There are 52 different independent operators at Sunset Slush, um, stretching now all the way to Florida and New Orleans. Okay. Is your, and you can elect not to answer this if you wish, but I'm compelled to ask, uh, is your current business in jeopardy if you do not get approval to sell on the beach? Let me say this. No, we're not in jeopardy because honestly, if you taste it, you're coming back. <laughs> you should have brought that ice tonight. <laughs> but um, that's the thing is, those of you that are out in our community, you know Brunson, that Sunset Slush is in our local schools, it's on our local ball fields. Um, so no, we're very well known in the county. And on that same note, um, I mentioned earlier, my parents had the first store on Ocean Beach post office and all that. So I grew up there every summer. I never dreamed that Ocean Isle Beach would ever let any kind of peddling on that beach. Of course, I never dreamed that there would be a high rise either. That's changed. But my point of that is, is that when we, st we started here at Holden Beach, and then we started leasing the Ocean Isle, um, Pier store and the beach strand from the original owners of Sunset Flush two years ago. And so that kind of brought us to the point of where we understood it a little more about the beach services because we've become very active in it. And um, we also run the main store on um, 179 between Ocean Island and Sunset. And um, what it does, as far as to answer your question, I had no clue. I knew people at Holden Beach loved it, people at Ocean Island loved it. But I fielded so many phone calls last year from people calling our number wanting to know when our guys were coming, that they have waited and waited and waited. Um, it's such a demand over there that people call a local realtor, and those of you that have realty companies, they call and say, the cottage I'm looking at, did the beach carts go by there? So no, it would not keep us from it, by no means, because we, I think in the last seven years we built a pretty good business here. But, it would just not only enhance our business, plus we do have an issue It would help us as far as advertisement because people go to the west end of Holden Beach and some of them never even come our way. Thank you. Sim simply answered no, we are not going to go out of business if we don't get on the beach. <laughs> um, like I said, we're stuck here and we're going to stay here on no matter what. Is, we will constantly continue to come back and ask um, because we get asked all the time. And I, I think you deserve to, be, to present your case because you've been a business, quality business here for seven years. So I don't understand why you'd ever, any business would not be <coughs> invited and, and encouraged to present, uh, present their case to expand or, or uh, their business. I also have two other comments that um, you, you uh, talk about how it is regulated. Yes. That, and I think the key is well regulated, so we have control. So, you know, it's a slippery slope. Uh, we don't want to be commercialized. Well, that's what regulations are all about, to control growth, control, um, you know, the business. Um, I'm going to speak on that, actually, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, that was brought up earlier, and um, I forgot to mention it, because open up indoors box. We are all for being well known and 
and so popular there, uh, there was us, uh, Carolina Quench, which is a lemonade. Um, there was a hot dog vendor, which they're off. I think it's just two of us now that have gotten the permits this year. But what they let us do, because they had people calling town hall saying, you know, they need more carts or whatever, because we are so well known there, that they let us go back and get more permits of the ones that were left. Uh, because if they were going to allow 15 permits, and only six were taken, they let us go back and get three more. And um, just because the customers were wanting it. Uh, so, I mean, I do have to say I appreciate what Oceanau has done to support us in that, but they strictly regulate everything. Um, I put in your packets a letter from the mayor of Oceanau, and um, of course, I'm sure if you talked to her, they were concerned at the beginning too, but they have fine tuned it to where they are very strict on who's there, and they enforce, you know, the <coughs> conduct and the behavior there too. Is the complete package available to the public in the back of the room? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's on the. It's on the internet. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I would encourage everybody to look at it. It's very well I was presented. Say, I was, uh, Oak Island. They we we spoke to the owners over there the other day, and they've been doing this would be their thirteenth season pushing on the beach, and they are um, they have a limited amount. Anyone can go get a permit and go out there. Yet there's only two different. The other question in, in the package, and, and if you can confirm this, you you offered to do a one-year pilot. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Okay. That's okay. what actually we did on Ocean Isle 15 years ago. Um, the original I was presented to the board and said, just give us a trial season, give us one summer. If it doesn't work and you're nobody's comfortable with it, fine. But at least we could see if it's something that works. And of course, it did work. We're willing to do whatever you ask of us, um, just okay. to have an opportunity. Thank you. I, my opinion is I'd like to understand the regulations because I, 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 I'd like to understand, I'd like to get all the information before I make, before a decision is made. Uh, that's how, uh, how, I, how I operate. So unless we understand the uh, how other beach towns control their beach strand vendors, and you know if and what the what we legally can do to restrict it, um, uh, that I'd like to that that, that that that's I think is the is the first thing we to do could should do before we any decision is made. And is that a question? Like, I have a lot of legal questions that you may be able to answer right now. I can try. Um, um, and I hate to interrupt, but you just said that and it made me think of something. Uh, which, it's in our proposal, but we all have to carry certain insurance, and we are very well covered in that. And so we're not a liability to the town because we're covered under our own concessions. My concern is, is if you say we're only going to permit three food carts, and I'm just making up a number. <coughs> and we prevent businesses that aren't on the island from getting those permits, like their brick and mortar, you know, building on our island. Is that really equitable? I mean, and can we get in trouble for that? Is that? There are lots of um, different approaches to this in terms of beach services, to use that term. Um, some municipalities um, have regulations that require a permit application to meet basic requirements. It's first come, first serve with lottery. Um, you know, some beach municipalities require that the business that wants to transact also has to have a brick and mortar building within the town limits. So the, there are lots 
Yeah, no, that's understood. But, that, but so it is legal? It's because really the, big, no, the number one attraction to me was that they do have a presence. This company does, do, uh, does have a presence on the beach. You can allow it or you can prohibit it. But it could be a, a prerequisite. Having a brick and mortar business. You can structure it in a number of different ways. Okay. Yes. okay. Could we be an issue if they're selling ice in front of an ice cream shop and it takes business away from the ice cream shop that happens to be on the beach selling ice cream? So I think the next step is, what, as you mentioned to me, would be you work with the staff in providing some of those options Certainly. to go. So uh, a informed decision can be made. Because I appreciate those people that spoke. It makes me nervous. Um, just not having um, enough guidelines to give you, I mean, I don't really know how to direct you quite yet, um, so good luck. <laughs> but, I mean, I just feel like we need to regulate it such that it's so much that we would just be giving one company a permit and that's not legal. Not if you're building it, if, you're, if they're the only people that you're going to give it, you have to offer it. Right. Yeah, yeah there's a well, fine line. I, I, I agree. Uh, I appreciate the, 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 the discussion beforehand, too. But as mentioned, there's hundreds and hundreds of people that I've been to Ocean Isle, I, I confess. <laughs> and I've had your product, um, and I think it's an, an enhancement to our family beach. Um, and that, that's my opinion. Other people, and there are a lot of there, there are tourists that come here that I'm sure would would like that. And we're in the tourist business. I, I have a point of order question for the mayor. The agenda said a guest speaker. It seems to me that we're getting past the guest speaker into the debate about whether we should do it or not. And I'm wondering if that is appropriate. No, sir, in my opinion, it's not. Those pleasant and all the uh, points well taken, and, and unless the commissioners tell me I'm wrong and the attorney agrees, I'm going to say yes. Point of order stands. They've made their presentation. There's no, no there's nothing in the agenda that talks about uh, unless I'm not seeing it, the debate or anything about it. It's just a presentation, and that is all that's allowed. So you are correct, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda, number 10, discussion and possible action on ordinance number 1701, town clerk, Ms. Fennell. Need a motion to approve that. I call for discussion. We need a motion before we can discuss it. I move that we uh, approve Ordinance 1701, the uh, enacting and adopting a supplement to the Code of Ordinances. Second. Second. All right, now discuss it. This is a housekeeping exercise, if there ever was one. Sure. Looks good. You ready to vote? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. All in favor, say aye. 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 It's unanimous, Madam Clerk. <clears throat> Number 11, discussion and possible approval of solid waste contract. Mr. Hewitt. 
Uh, we've got Kendra McDonald, uh, our administrative assistant, is going to speak to the solid waste contract tonight. I know my name's on the agenda, but Kendra's the one that really knows the deep background details and is probably the smartest one here on it tonight. Um, we've got the memo in front of you. I don't know how well you've been able to look at it, but pretty much you know, the only change we have is a 2% increase on some of our fees and possibly doing away with yard waste collection. Uh, unless you don't want to do away with yard waste collection, then, you know, we recommend looking at, um, looking at the separate vendors and bidding for it. But the cost would be substantial if you don't. <coughs> and, you know, did away with the recycling center, voluntary recycling is Pretty much the same as it has been. How much does it cost us a year to do the trash, the yard waste pickup? Right now, it's what 98 cent, 98 cent per property. But you're only looking at 200, 300 participation, you know, property participation. So you're all paying for something that not everybody's utilizing. So. It's about a fourteen thousand dollar hit. On the budget, on the solid waste budget. So it costs fourteen thousand dollars a year to pick up dirt. <clears throat> About that much, yes. I, for one, <clears throat> am in, use that. I trim my own shrubs. I trim my palm trees. I, I trim my oleanders. I don't have a truck to put the waste in. I put it out there. They come pick it up. And everybody on my street does the same thing. Tony Marowitz does that. Jack Smith does that. Larry Ivy does that. <laughs> the Fitzgeralds do that. It's something, I live on a street that has a lot of permanent residents, and we all use that service. So I think that it's, it's something that a lot of the people do use, that are at least the people that live here on a permanent <coughs> basis. How many did you say, Kendra, would take advantage of this? I think last time we talked to Waste Ministries, it was between two and 300 people. But you've got six months of the year, twice a month pickup, you know, out of those 300 people, you might have one person use it, you know, a month out of those 300, you know, so. But like I said, you're talking about 2,240-something properties, and everybody's paying for that, not everybody's using it. <coughs> so the recommendation is to use possibly someone else to do that work? And could there be a different model? Um, you know, not not every property pay for it. Just give an estimate. You know, we've got history that there's 300 properties use it. Um, why are we not using that history to formulate a contract with someone? I think with speaking with waste industries, it wasn't cost efficient for them. They are legally to be responsible. So that's why they're pressing it where they, they basically don't want to do the business. Okay. Mr. Clemens, want to make a comment? <laughs> Well, it seems we do have a precedent in that we individually pay for recycling bins. If we want to recycle, then that could be an option for yard waste. Do you have an alternative of another organization that might provide the service? I don't. I think that's something that we're going to need to bid separately for. You know, we're just going to have to look. Well, it might be good to know how much that would cost and if we could, in fact, do it on yeah. And, and, that's, and that's what we haven't done. We haven't put together a statement of work and put a solicitation out. And we're just uh, proposing that it be, be deleted from the waste industry contract and delve in to see if there's, an, if there's still a desire to do that. We would recost it separately and bring it back to the board. 
it's a smaller scope of work and what's really happened is waste industries is beyond that now. What was a, um, I asked David this earlier, was, was it asked of waste industries to provide, what would the cost be to provide island-wide recycling? We've not, not uh, for this exercise, uh, well, yes it was for this exercise. We had done it previously and then uh, we, did, we also included it when we were going through here and the closest we could get was about a $120,000 delta um, with our current level of service and what, what it would take waste industries to provide us with a, um, a basically a curbside recycling function. Changed it to year round, um, where they collect it once a week instead of bi weekly. It would be $84 annually per person. And then if you change it to once a week for the summer and then every other week in the off season, it's $66 per person. Our, Are you our saying dilemma, per, per house? <laughs> per property? Correct. Okay. Per, per bin. It would be per bin. Per, per bin. bin. Per bin. Okay. Right. And then we're going to have to figure out how many bins rental houses are going to need, because if you go buy a rental house, their cans are full of soda cans, beer cans, and water bottles. And if, they use, and if they use the blue can to put their trash in, the <coughs> trash company won't pick it up. The recycle people won't pick it up, and the <coughs> trash company won't pick it up, which means Chris and them have to end up going out and empty. So it's just something to think about. The, the cost can be figured out it's more than what you're paying now, quite a bit more. What we cannot come to grips with is the service level requirement for the seasonal influx of rental properties. That, that is the uh, hurdle that we cannot break or the, the code that we, we cannot crack on the twice weekly uh, pickup. That, that's, that's our stymie. I mean, the, the cost, we, you, you can throw money at it, and, and put that type of service in, and it will be more, um, but we cannot get past the logistics of the weekly turnover for the rentals. That's where we're stymied. Have we looked in the past at a recycle requirement for rental houses and done a weekly pickup of that? That's, that's exactly what, what we're talking about there. Now, what, what I would like to do is September we will have a year's worth of data when our recycling bin is, is will have been closed and we'll have a handle on uh, a number of years of what the subscription service for recycling is because right now it's 10 percent of the homes you know su subscribe to the service um, and with a, a a year's worth of data uh, plus the under our belt with the recycling center down, um, what I would like to do is basically assemble, um, I hate to use the term focus group, but a, um, a stakeholder group that includes <coughs> uh, some of the property managers, because the property managers are gonna tell me that it does not work for, for those weekly rent or something. We're going to come back to that, but use that, um, that group as a way to attempt to um, shrink wrap a solution here better than what we've come up with so far which is basically the same thing that we've had before plus some cost increases and less less a few of the services so after that data is available is this contract can you can we update this contract if needed uh, yes and the term of this contract is how long mm -hmm. three years, three years. Thanks.
So I'm assuming we, you're voting on the changes the attorney recommended. Yes. Everybody understand that? <coughs> All right. And we're voting not to have yard waste pickup also. Is that correct? Yeah. This, this contract doesn't have yard, yard waste in it. It doesn't mean that we can't get, look for somebody else to do it, right? Right. You need a vote? Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. No. Four to one, Madam Clerk. <clears throat> We're at number 12. Yep. Ms. Ferguson. Evening, everyone. Um, this item on the agenda is regarding the Brunswick County Greenway bike routes and cattle trail plan. <coughs> in April of 2015, we were invited by the Brunswick County Planning Department and other municipalities in the county to participate <coughs> in a countywide plan that would show how bike routes, um, greenways, and blueways um, interconnected within the county. Um, people chose to participate at different levels. Some towns could use the plan immediately in grant situations they were in with developments and greenways and getting credit for that. Um, we were not in a situation where we could currently use that for the grant that we were doing, but we did decide for promotional purposes that we would participate at the minimal level, which was $500 to be included on the promotional material. Um, so this is just to basically um, finalize that. The money's already been paid. It's just to show support that the maps are complete now and their final drafts are out. They had an open house that people could attend to give feedback and it goes before their board of commissioners in March and they're just looking for a resolution of support from all the communities that agreed to participate. <coughs> Any questions? Is there a motion? I move we approve the resolution. I second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Favor say no, it's unanimous. Thank you, Ms. Ferguson. Can I keep going? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, um, the Lockwood Folly Navigation Dredging, um, if you guys will remember when we were in this time of year last year and doing our budget preparation meeting, this <coughs> came up. We did not have enough information at the time on the items like volume, cost, what we thought would be involved, but we did bring it to the board's attention that if it did come up and there was more information that could make a decision um, that we could go with it, we would bring it back to your attention. Um, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers will be performing navigation maintenance of the Lockwood Folly Inlet Channel on 50 feet of the Widener at the AIWW Inlet Crossing in the March time frame that possibly has been moved up time-wise. Um, we are going to be meeting with them tomorrow to discuss the location of the pipeline on the beach. Um, and just, they just finished up a different section earlier, so they may be here sooner than March. They're going to be using the least cost method of disposal to place the sand on the east end of Holden Beach between approximately Amazing Grace and 240 OBE. Um, as we did piggyback in 2014, they've approached us about piggybacking. What makes it nice um, to do it this way is that we are able to use the core state memorandum of agreement, which means we don't have to dip into our permits. Um, even though this den widener section where we would take it back and not covered under federal dollars that they would pay, the North Carolina Division of Water Resources does, does pay two thirds of the estimated cost of 456,000, um, with the local match being 152,000, and Brunswick County already agreeing to pay half of that, which was 76. So that would leave the town with paying 76. 
Um, we do believe that the additional 60,000 cubic yards of this decreased cost per yard is worth capitalizing on at this time. The erosional east end of Holden Beach could certainly benefit from the sand placement, as will the entire strand eventually due to the coral drift, and especially in light of calls from the east end property owners since the central region has gone out about what could be done in their area. So staff is recommending to approve the piggyback project and the appropriate budget amendment that's attached. I have a question. As this, this sounds familiar, um, have we done this before? 14 was the last time? I'm sorry if you said that. Okay, thanks. And it's, and it's probably been done many times before that, yeah. uh, except the town hasn't, hasn't paid for it. All of It's always been funded by the feds before. Okay. But the last time was 2014? Mm -hmm. And same time, March? March? I believe it was in February. Same, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Thank you. Christy, in, in your letter, <clears throat> you, it, it states the county commissioner's favor contributing 76,000. And since this time they actually did, they've already voted on their section of it. They just got confirmation of that. Okay, Steve good. Tom. That's all I had. Sound like a great deal. Yeah. I move that we approve ordinance 1702. Second. Uh, motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. I believe that's unanimous. I believe we're number 15 now, is that correct? Shark fishing, <laughs> Mr. Fletcher. After I heard the presentation from Oak Island describing how the people were shark fishing from the beach and they had two shark attacks on the beach in 2015, is it 2015? 2015. It occurred to me that it might be wise for Holden Beach to step out front and lead the way and not wait for something to happen. And in fact, set of a uh, statute that says we don't allow shark fishing on the beach, anywhere on our beach, on the intercoastal waterway from the island or from the pier. That's my proposal. I would ask that you make sure that we have jurisdiction over that, sir. Well, when you see shark fishing, you know it's shark fishing. It's the size of the reel, size of the rod, and if they're going out in a kayak to put a dead chicken on a big hook that big, they're shark fishing. And I think my only interest would be the, the chumming because, I, I mean, from my limited viewpoint, that's what attracts them. So if there's something we could do on that end, if we have appropriate jurisdiction.
That's just my opinion, not the board's. Jeez. Meeting time. Fortunately, we didn't have any that year. It was, it was Oak Island and it was Ocean Island. But for whatever reason, they passed us by. And I was thankful for that. And my other question, my question would be is if someone happens to catch a shark who's not fishing for a shark, what do you do? I mean, I've been out there before fishing, caught a small bait fish, been reeling them in. Yep. The shark has taken it, and I've ended up pulling the shark, having to get the shark off my line, which I wasn't real happy about. I mean, but what do you do? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, uh, that, that's pretty, that's a pretty tough one. <coughs> I would, I would, I don't know if the view is worth the time, I guess, is what I'm saying. I would be definitely be opposed to chumming. Anytime you throw lots of blood and dead yep. fish out there into the water, you're just asking to get something to come in that you don't want to come in. Could you ask some questions about that, Noel? Yes, and and how far away from the shore can boats chum as well? Because I've seen small little skiffs right at the shoreline throwing buckets of blood in with a kid, you know, a couple yards away swimming. I will get some information. Thank you. Well, we have an ordinance that prevents them from. On yeah, the kayak on the other hand, the kayak on the other hand, that kind of slows the feet step. So it's a tough one. Is there a motion on the floor? <coughs> Is there a motion? Hearing no motion, then we're ready to move on? Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Mr. Hewitt, town manager's report. Yes, sir. I'll be brief tonight. The uh, Central Reach project, we cleared the pier over the weekend, and it looks like um, 
we're about 65% of the way done. Um, that doesn't, that's not a volume metric, that's a down the beach kind of measurement. Uh, a thumb, <clears throat> Kentucky windage me measurement. Uh, FEMA, Matthew damages that project worksheet that we've submitted to capitalize on the dredges presence here and trying to take advantage of not having to mobilize that project worksheet cleared the Office of Legislative Affairs late last week and I understand is now in the Office of Management and Budget. Um, it was President's Day weekend and I know everybody was off Congress's home for 10 days now and about the only thing I can say is the window of opportunity <coughs> is closing fast so we're we're still we're still in the game, but somebody else is pitching. That's where we're at. Um, Bridgeview Park, we've broken ground on the picnic shelter. Uh, estimated <coughs> completion date on that facility is one April, so it should go up pretty quick once we get some pilots here. These uh, Michael Norton asked me to pass on <coughs> to y'all the sewer vulnerability assessment that was approved uh, last month. He has uh, met with a staff. We've assembled a whole bunch of documents, engineering uh, information for them so he can characterize the situation. He's uh, um, benchmarked Sunset Beach's <coughs> operation, Oak Island's operation. He's taken some of our staff with them to both of those other locations to see what um, to what they're doing and looking at an end of March deliverable for you for the report coming back to you. So I just wanted to pass that on to uh, to y'all from him. Uh, decals, uh, normally they would have gone out <coughs> in February and we had intended to send them out uh, in early March limiting them to two decals but I can't get that in front of y'all until the March meeting uh, to amend the fee schedule so I'm loath to ask you to let me send them just two decals and buy four uh, on a whim uh, it looks like it's going to be the April time frame before we can get decals out. Did we look at the option of getting it uh, an app on the phones that kept people's ID to come on the on the island. No, we talked about it after the storm. If if it was talked about, I must have missed that one because it didn't register with me even through the after action report. I don't I don't recall that. We haven't looked at it. So so it's a change from four to two, David. You're you're saying the decals per that's, that's household. That's, that's what we like, and just as sure as I'm doing something that I don't like to do is I'm putting something in front of the board, and um, I don't have the, hump, the staff work done to go along with that. I'm just is there a reason you reduce it from four to two? We think that people don't take the decal seriously and by reducing the supply, believe that it will get their attention. Are we going to now, now it's two free. You can buy the other two to get four. And the rationale for constricting the supply is that um, per our senior physical um, operations specialist is after a hurricane, uh, when we're controlling access to the beach, you need a pickup truck and a sedan to get on the beach. There's no need for people to have one for their Harley Davidson and one for their golf court, that golf cart, that kind of thing. So. Good. <clears throat> well, would we be in order to just uh, seek consensus to give them town manager direction if he so needs it that would work for me I know what to do or what I'd like to do um, that's does that need to be an agenda item for the public to talk about to um, okay.
the, the charge in the fee schedule will remain the same. It's just we're going to reduce the number of free passes. So the price goes up. Price goes up, number goes down. Price stays the same. <laughs> That's not changing prices. It's listed as four for free for zero dollars in the fee schedule. So it is listed as that. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Okay. We need to be safe and stuff. So, Madam Clerk, is whoever's in charge of the agendas, March. We'll talk with you about that and maybe they'll consider putting it on the agenda. March. <coughs> Anything else, Mr. Hewitt? <clears throat> Just if have y'all had a chance to look at your calendar so we can verify the time for the 15 March budget workshop? Nine. Nine works for me. Nine works for me. Works. works for me. It's good. Maybe I missed that one too. We didn't get that. We didn't get that. Okay. I'm good. All right. Thank you, sir. Sand Project, I've heard nothing but positive comments from property owners, visitors, and all of those that are in awe of what's taking place out there. It's such a good project. Michelle, seekers are more than happy. I don't think I've ever seen as many people on Holden Beach, Beach Strand in February <laughs> as we are having. And um, I don't remember seeing multiple people in multiple locations swimming in February <clears throat> uh, like we had last weekend. Little kids, adults, didn't see any locals out there. <clears throat> um, I do uh, have one concern, and I don't know if some changes have been made that I don't know about, but um, whenever there's a legal meeting for the uh, mayor of a town <coughs> in, a, in a closed session, uh, am I still supposed to be the person representing the town? I mean, I've got the title, but I just want to make sure that I'm supposed to be the one that represents the town. You mean as a spokesperson? <clears throat> Well, if, an, if a commissioner is going to sit in my chair in a closed legal meeting, I would greatly appreciate a forewarning and have an opportunity to understand it so that I won't be embarrassed and the town won't be embarrassed. And that's all I'm going to say about it. So if you'll communicate with me, <clears throat> if you're going to take my place and let me sit in the back of the room, uh, I'd like to know about it ahead of time. And that's all I'm going to say about it. If you, <clears throat> I was hot, but I didn't say anything in the whole meeting. Um, we need a spokesperson for the town of Holden Beach. And um, back whenever this administration took office, uh, Congressman McIntyre came and offered his services. And we have never, we cast him aside, we have never had anyone speaking for us in Washington or in Raleigh that I'm aware of. We don't have anybody on the payroll, and I've never seen anybody from the town at those meetings. And here I'm sitting here tonight, and we're playing catch up in regards to the flood insurance, the wind and hail, and so forth. And I just want to say, pleading with the town, hire somebody in these meetings to speak for us. Because we don't have anybody anymore. We have nobody. And uh, we are an entity of the town of Holden Beach, and we're in the books as a town of Holden Beach. But getting things done, you have to have somebody carrying the ball for you and we have no one and I'm just going to encourage the board if you don't want McIntyre find somebody that has the connections the knowledge and know-how how to help this town and with all due respect letters are not going to do you any good 
Now, those of you who've been around the government for a long time, they're wonderful and they make you feel good in sending them, but it's not going to open the doors for you and it's not going to give a priority for you. If you don't have a personal relationship with those in power, you're not going to get anything. And we are spinning our wheels. And I'm here tonight to tell you that ain't nothing going to speed up this flood map. Nothing. I was the first one to tell you last year that it wasn't going to be delivered on time. And I had several people, oh, you're wrong. It's coming Jan. I told you, and I stood my ground, and I was right. I'm standing my ground tonight. You're not going to get a map this year. The only whisper I've had may be December, no later than February. So I'm just sharing the summary of the knowledge that I just happen to have. And uh, you can take it to the bank for whatever it's worth. And we need all of the interested parties that want to be participating and help. We need your help. Phone calls and letters are good. Individual phone calls, individual handwritten notes, that kind of communication is better. But blanket letters, they're going to go on top of the desk or a file drawer or thrown away. I mean, that's just the way it is up the ladder. And, uh, and looking around the room, I see people have been in high places and held high offices. And, you know, the way the bureaucracy is, that's just the way it works. And I am also told that the question was raised tonight about just Holden Beach Island. No. And I think someone made a comment that it crosses the waterway. Our map crosses the waterway. So whenever we send a letter, the POA sends a letter about Holden Beach, you're not talking about just Holden Beach. You're crossing over onto the mainland. And those are the kind of things that you have to be careful because the first thing somebody on the mainland says, oh, Holden Beach, that speak for me. And then, they, and then the people in power get the mixed signals. So what do they do? Nothing. You've got to have people that know how it works with knowledge, expertise, and so forth, speaking for you in the right places at the right time. And uh, I've tried to keep my mouth shut about it, but I hate to hear all of us begging for flood insurance maps, and we're going nowhere. And we're not going to go anywhere until we get our game plan together, implement the game plan, and make something happen. So that's enough of my preaching. And I had some other things, but I'm going to leave that off. I've already said too much. But I am impassioned about saying what I'm saying to you. Been doing this a, a long time, officially and unofficially. And, um, you know, whenever I was Congressman McIntyre's um, spokesperson and manager for Prince County for 18 years, I went to a lot, of, a lot of meetings. We got millions of dollars for Holden Beach with the help of Mr. Hewitt and some others. That money's gone, and you don't have anybody trying to get it for us. The money's dried up, yes, but how did we get Brunswick County and North Carolina's money? How many people in this room went to any of those meetings behind closed doors or in open session? How many of you went? How many did you go to? I've been to three. You went to three? Where were they? Where were they? I believe you. Uh, yeah. That's a general, that's an open public meeting, right? Yeah. All right. We'll move on to you, sir. You got the floor. Well, I guess in response to your comments, one, I was here when Congressman McIntyre made his presentation, and I was sort of surprised that he didn't make a motion to, to hire him, because I knew right away he went to another island and was hired by another island. But it never seemed to come up as a subject. Commissioners usually make the motion. Yeah, he can't make a motion. My hands are tied. And I have to ask, in your earlier comments, were you suggesting that this board has had a closed meeting that you weren't in attendance? No, sir. Oh, okay. I went to a meeting that was a closed meeting and someone was there in my place. 
not town meeting. Are you talking about the investigation? Yes, sir, Anybody? I am. I was invited by the district attorney to be there. How did your rep? I was personally invited by the district you attorney. You represent the town. I did not represent the well, town. Well, you just said you represent the town. You represent the town. He's not going to tell you no. <clears throat> and somebody asked him, he's never going to tell somebody no. I didn't call him. He called me. I'm not going to debate it with you. Those of us that were witnesses were the ones in the room or those that replaced a witness. I, I don't want to debate with you. I just don't want it to happen again. If it's going to happen again, just tell me. That's all I'm asking. Just tell me. I had no knowledge of it, but that's all I want to say. It'll never come up again. <laughs> Thank you for coming to the meeting tonight. That's well, good to see all the different representatives here tonight. It indicates interest, and that's a good thing. Um, I'll strongly consider some of the things that we've heard tonight. Uh, foremost in my uh, mind is, is protecting Holden Beach as it exists with fair consideration of anything we want to do in addition to that. But uh, I am, my, uh, I'm wired to be convinced to do something different first before I act. And I'm still deliberating on that. One of the things that's come to my mind is, is uh, over this past year plus of being on the board, is that we serve a two-year term, and the uh, it's been my understanding that, that previous boards, some time ago, had terms that that overlapped each other. To whereas uh, we wouldn't have a board, theoretically, we could have a board turnover every two years. And uh, my, from my own personal uh, perspective. Uh, I believe it casts undue hardship on the, the town staff because Mr. Hewitt reports to the board and uh, I am seriously considering uh, re possibly reinstituting a staggered board uh, so that number one, the board members well, myself, I would have more experience uh, and I could better interact with the town on, and possibly make better decisions. So I'm just saying that publicly that I have no aspiration of enacting anything that would extend my current term because I, I would have a personal ethical problem with that. But I do believe uh, we need to consider uh, implementing staggered terms so that we can better support and provide possibly wiser decisions in directing the town. So, yeah. Mr. Freer? Um, okay, thank you uh, everyone for coming. I appreciate the input from HBPOA and from the rest of the community, community regarding the FEMA flood map. Flood map. We, um, trust me, everybody understands that it's, uh, it, it uh, means a lot to a lot of people and we're doing everything we can to, uh, to uh, make that uh, effective as soon as possible. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to say thank you to the staff for your hard work this past month and the um, Valentine dance, I understand, was a huge hit. Mm. There were a lot of people who had a lot of fun there, so thank you for that. How many people attended your dance? Very good. Heard good things. Ken? I uh, want to thank everybody for coming tonight. Um, I also want to uh, express the desire for the board to put an item on our agenda for next month to see if there's any public interest in having yard waste picked up by somebody else. And just because I want it doesn't mean that everybody else wants it. So 
So I'd like to see it on the agenda so we can see if there's any interest from the town. You, the members of the public. That's it. Thank you. Public comments on anything you want to talk about. <coughs> You're mighty quick to spring to your feet. What? You were quick to spring to your feet. Oh, yeah. You ready to go? Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited. How's everybody doing? <laughs> Good. Um, I just hey, wanted to talk in favor of the sunset slush. Uh, Pediment on the beach. I know you guys can regulate that. It needs to be regulated. But, you know, the, we're, we're a growing community. And as services become available, we try to incorporate those. And I think it would be a great thing to have a business on the beach uh, picking up trash providing a service to the uh, the kids, basically it's kids, you know, and it make more of a family environment to have Sunset Slush out there on the beach. Thanks, sir. <coughs> Ms. Young? Just a quick comment. When you mentioned McIntyre, who used to be our representative, and uh, we would all commend him for everything he did in regard to the beach. But we do have a representative now who has taken his place, and it's Mr. Rouser, I believe. And I believe that he came down here once. David, I think you and I met with him, or some of us met with him, in this room. I haven't seen him back here yet, and I don't mean to be political. I don't care what party he is. If he's supposed to be representing us, maybe it'd be nice if he got down here once in a while to see what we needed from him as our representative. Also, when we had that many um, island group, um, that was also a chance to get together for common good and lobbying. And we don't have that anymore, which is a shame. And apparently the new, the new group, I guess, has fallen apart. So. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Um, in regards to the congressman, I will be <coughs> meeting with him later this week, and um, the uh, group that you're talking about, they do meet quarterly, and uh, traditionally we meet in the county commissioner's chambers. Did I say that right, Mr. Hewitt? But do, we, yeah. do people know that? Well, it's, a, it's an open meeting. Um, it, it just started back. <coughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It just, just started. Some of us even know we went on the board. Yeah. On that board. Yeah. Still went to the and thank you for your time and effort put on that board. It was a learning experience. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. Anyone else talk about anything you want to talk about? Yes? Larry Bloom, 108 Lanes Paul. Uh, I've been holding four bags of limbs. I've got a whole bundle. I mean, about five or six bundles of limbs that I've been holding for the March thing, so it looks like it's not going to get picked up. Am I correct? Is that what we decided to throw Okay. So. Anyone else? Going once? Twice? All right. I need a reading from our clerk. Executive session to discuss the personnel matter pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143318 1183. I agree with you, Ken. Just waste a minute. Is there a motion? Need a motion. Motion to go into executive session. Motion to go into executive session. Move 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 to